Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video to hear about the giveaway. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. Let's get into it. So it's been a little while since we've had an update in the 2022 bike build series. We, for the most part, finished up the front brake bike. And we talked about this bike being a trails bike and it has gotten warmer and warmer and the trail season has snuck up on me. And so the next step in the process, as you saw in the thumbnail and title, is a new set of handlebars. We're gonna put these brand new Nowhere BMX handlebars onto this bike, and then we're gonna take these bars and put them onto this bike. Because I feel like a brand new set of bars should go onto the bike I ride every day. And there's a couple facts about these things that are super, super interesting and awesome that we will talk about as we put them on. And the first step in the process as normal is to take off the bar ends so we can get the grips off. And the interesting part about the bars is that these bars and moving forward, any bars that you buy from nowhere will have been made in Nebraska, welded by Sam, one of the nowhere riders. It's so cool that Carl is doing that. And I don't wanna just give all of the details right away. And we've gotta use the air compressor now. So we'll keep giving details as we go. There's one grip. And we got an air compressor going, so it's probably hard to hear me. But we'll say goodbye to the turquoise swirl grip. I missed, but you couldn't see. We'll just keep going. The air compressor's annoying, but we're gonna keep it. Next step, taking off the brake lever. All right, air compressor is done. One thing that I am pretty particular about is my handlebar placement in relation to my fork and the angle that I have them forward. So, Basically, I have to like try and remember where they're at so that we can get them to the same place with the new bars and on that bike. I have these marked, but that doesn't help when you're keeping the stem and the bars separate. You, you get it. I think we've got it figured out. So next step in the process and the next fact about these new Nowhere bars is that they're pretty much as made in Nebraska as you can get. He sources the material where he can get it, which might not be Nebraska, but everything after sourcing the tubing is done in Nebraska, which is really, really awesome. Now, let's get these off of here, and we may have to hit time-lapse because this process takes a second. An important thing with a stem that has a split top cap design is that you want to remember which way everything went. So I always remember with the Alienation Vault stem that the cutout on the sides of the cap goes forward. Logo on the right. And there we have it. The handlebars are off. I rode these for almost a year and the tubing on these is mighty thick. So I'm confident that they will be just fine. Going on to Victoria's, AKA the trail bike. So we're gonna set these aside and grab the other ones. How ironic is it that Carl uses saran wrap on bars that are made so that you can saran wrap easier? That's pretty funny. And I love to do saran wraps with these bars. But as I said earlier, these are welded by the Nowhere Rider, Sam Bustle. He does an awesome job with welding. I'm pretty sure that's like what he does for his career, fabricating welding. So it's pretty awesome that he's welding these bars. And once we get all of this saran wrap off of here, I will show you, gosh, a 
close up on the welds. So after the material is bought and picked up, Carl takes it to a place in Nebraska to have it mandrill bent. So it's bent in Nebraska. And let's take a closer look at the welds on these bars. For any of you who know about welding and BMX stuff, we take a closer look at this. You already know that uh, this is a great welding job for a BMX part. The next step in this process will be to just put the bars onto the stem. We're going to have to cut these, so we're going to have to make sure that we get those measured correctly. Measure twice, cut once. That saying I'm sure you've heard before. Another thing with this is that you always make sure with your stem, and I'm going to say this again when I'm doing it later, you're making sure with your stem that your cap has the equal gap all the way around it. Front to back, side to side, every gap is the same because if it's not, then that means you have uneven pressure on your bars and on your stem cap. And if you land just the right or very wrong way, it can make it so it will snap easier and you'll have problems with it breaking easier than it would have if you had everything tensioned evenly. Uneven force is not something that you want to have. So let's take a look here. Somehow it appears that I have centered it just right first try. So let's tighten this down temporarily just so we can keep it in place. The next step in the process of these bars being made is that Carl will pick them up from being bent and then take them to the place that is cutting them. So they're cut and bent in two different places and both of these are in Nebraska. It's such a cool thing that they are as made in Nebraska as you can pretty much get. Did I even put them at the correct place? Wow, they are almost in the right place angle-wise, too. That is crazy. I wasn't even trying. So now the next step for me is just, I'm going to tighten this down, and then next time before I actually ride, I will double-check that they're in the exact correct location. And then I have to figure between three different bikes that all of the bars are in the exact same place because if they're off, it feels totally different. I've got some fun plans for this bike right here. Some things coming, things that I'm excited for. The gap is like almost even already too. This is crazy. I don't want to say this, but I kind of feel like it's going too well. What you can do if you don't have it perfectly even is you can just loosen one side and when you do that it lets it up so that you can tighten the other side as much as you just loosened and that is an even gap all the way around my angle is right right where it was at so the next step in the process will be taking our Shout outs to Park Tool, Hacksaw, and Saw Guide, and cutting these to size. Shout out to Park Tool. I always have the proper tools for the job, and that's definitely something that I am stoked about. So my bars were 27 and a half. Currently they are 30. So what we're going to do is take off, we need two and a half inches off of that so we need an inch and a quarter what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna take the saw guide i'm gonna put it on here so that once i get my inch and a quarter marked all i have to do is cut it line it up and cut it so inch and a quarter inch and a quarter 
inch and a quarter plus an inch and a quarter equals two and a half inches. The cool thing about the saw guide is that you can put the saw into it and see exactly where your line is at before you tighten it down and know that you are cutting exactly where you want to cut. Did I mention that there's a giveaway at the end of the video? Whew. Number one, done. Now, we take the piece and we use it as a template to mark our other side. And then I'll measure between that line and the other end of the bar and we should have 27 and a half maybe maybe we're struggling we're struggling there we go 27 and a half right on the money perfect same process once again should i do the whole thing left-handed this is an awful plan it isn't even started yet Piece number two is off. How close did we go? Boom, nailed it. We're gonna put the grip that I already had on here onto the brake side, because the brake side grips last much longer. Leave a little bit of room for the bar end. And let's throw the other one on here. Cool thing about these bars in continuing talking about the process of them being made is that after they're cut, Carl then picks them up again and they are taken to Sam who welds them. Which is another thing that I think is just super, super awesome. And then from there, they get taken to the powder coater or the chrome plater and uh, they have their finish put on them. So these bars go through quite a lot of steps in their production and most of it, as close as you can pretty much get to all of it, is done in Nebraska. Which I think is just, I mean, it's a feat in itself to do that let alone to have that done for an entire like run of bars forever. It's just something to pride themselves on. I'm stoked on it. Also, I haven't mentioned up to this point, you can buy these bars. There's probably like 20 sets between nine and a halfs and tens that are left. So if you want a set of these bars, hit the link in the description down below to go to the eBay page and uh, that's where you can buy them. Also, there is a giveaway coming. We're getting closer. Once I get everything installed and done, we will talk about the giveaway and I'll tease it right now. I'll just tease it. We got a little tease here. Oh, oh, oh shoot. You know what's coming. Just uh, stick around to the end of the video to find out the full details. Ooh, brake lever, got some grease on it. It's okay, wipe that off. And I'm not gonna fully tighten this down either yet. And actually, now that I think about it, this bike is done. We've got the new bars on there. Oh, 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 just kidding. There's one other step in the process. Where is it at? We're gonna get a close up for this. I get to put on the sticker, which on the other ones was on the left side with the R up here. It's one of the uh, Danimal frame stickers that Carl put on those bars before he sent it to me. And it's different than all of the other bars. So let's get a close up, put this thing on. Here we go. No going back from this one sure we wipe it down nice and good and 
place the M there, the R there, and we make sure to do it correctly. If you bought any handlebars at Cornhucket, there's a chance that I helped with the sticker that you have on your bars. Perfect. And there we go. Nowhere sticker on the bars. They're done. Now we get to put the other ones on the other bike. All right, so first step with these bars to get them off is to remove the bar ends. Got these plastic animal bar ends with these Edwin grips. These are some of the most comfortable grips of all time. And Victoria has a blue pair on her bike to match the bike. <sighs> Got it. We will be reusing these grips on the bike. Once again, the air compressor kicks on. We're gonna take off the lever now. Fun fact about this brake lever is that this brake lever came on my first ever complete bike. This was on my Fit Complete. 2006. Pretty cool. But relatively soon, we're going to be putting a whole new brake setup on this bike. Little teaser for what is to come. And now we take off the bars. These are actually Sputnik Skyline bars. They're, uh, let's see, Tony Nyers signature bars from Sputnik, which is pretty sweet. And Tony Nyer, when I got these, I had no idea, was uh, or is an Ohio guy. I think he still lives here. He might not. I don't know. But at the time, he definitely was. And I think that this skyline is Cincinnati's skyline on them, which is pretty cool. Little fun facts that make things more fun. So we're gonna get these bars off of here and toss on the ones that just came off of my bike. That's gonna take off these 825, I think, rise bars and put on some 95 rise bars to where they'll actually be, you know, comfortable to ride 825 maybe in its time felt okay but 825 is way too low for me having ridden something taller than that it's just the rise on that is far too low to be comfortable and we'll grab these ones and also I'm gonna clean off this stem because it is greasy as hell and this is like the best time to clean it it's even got grease on the inside there it's going to get dirty at the trails but we might as well start out cleaner than it was all right so now we got these bars let's put them on and just like last time we're going to guess and I've got to say throughout this process too, I have to say how grateful I am that I even have the ability to put together these bikes, to be able to have them for three totally separate things, making it so that I don't have to ride the bike that I ride all the time at the trails. And then every time I go to the skate park, I have to clean the dirt off my tires, clean my rim off probably adjust my brakes some and make it so they work again because after riding trails the brakes definitely just aren't going to work at all so to even have the opportunity to be able to put together three totally separate bikes is something that I definitely don't take for granted and am very appreciative of appreciative of alienation bmx because i've got lots of alienation parts on all of them appreciative of nowhere bmx i've got three pairs of these nowhere bmx bars sunday in full factory i have three sound waves that i'm able to build up because previous bikes 
I'm able to do this and I'm just grateful and I'm definitely not going to take this for granted at all and every time I ride I'm definitely going to think about the fact that I'm able to ride these bikes and the people who give me the opportunities that they do are the reason for that. So currently I'm just trying to center the bars in the stem. They're definitely off at the moment. That's pretty close. Now we have to get them in the same spot as the other bars. As close to it as possible so that when I get on this bike it doesn't feel wildly different than the bike that I ride at the skate park all the time. In the summer, I'd say I ride a pretty even mix of skate park and trails. Because once it gets hot enough, you don't want to be at the skate park in the middle of the day. So you go to the trails until it cools off and then you go to the skate park. Right there. I'm calling that good. So I'll be able to do that and I'll be able to have this bike at the trails to get dirty and not worry about and then the other bike at the skate park so that I can have my dialed in bike that I keep as dialed brakes as possible to ride there so let's get these bars on and tightened up So we got the bars on, they are all nice and evenly spaced with the gap on the stem. Now we put on some grips and go back to the air compressor. The easiest way to put on grips ever. But also I have a video talking about rubbing alcohol if you ever want to try that. And stay tuned, continue watching. The end of the video is a giveaway. <laughs> grips are on. Bar ends, there's no way these bar ends are going in here. These, The tubing on these bars is super thick. I'm gonna have to figure out a different bar end solution. We will figure that out, just not right this second. So next we do the brake lever and that will be it for these bars and other than the giveaway, this video. There's a lot of stuff that I want to do to this bike. I'll probably put an alienation seat on it. I may be swapping out some other stuff. The back wheel definitely needs a makeover. And I probably am going to try at some point to get alienation rims on this thing. Definitely needs alienation rims. I ride for alienation, so I should have their rims on my bike. That is that. I don't know, I don't necessarily like putting that there and I definitely don't want to put it down there. So the straight cable may just flop. It's fine. It may not be fine for tire grabs and stuff. We'll see. I'm also taking this off very soon so it really doesn't matter anyways. But for now, I need to figure out what I'm going to do with bar ends. So I will be right back and we will talk about the giveaway as well. All right, so as it stands, I actually don't have any metal bar ends to put in here, and the bar ends that come with handlebars, I think, account for a tubing that is much thinner than this. The tubing on these Nowhere bars is thick. They are made to be strong and last you, so I'm going to have to figure out the bar end situation. I may hit up Matt Berenger and see if he wants to make me a couple sets of bar ends, and uh, until then... We've got a giveaway to talk about. You may have guessed and you may have saw, and I'm not gonna unwrap these because I'm gonna have to ship them out. But Nowhere BMX, Carl Hinckley, was nice enough to give me a set of the Nebraska-made Nowhere BMX bars right here. I think these are nine and a halfs to give away. So unfortunately, because shipping is insane, and I know you guys can understand that, shipping is crazy, it costs so much money to ship things across the world that we got to limit it to the U.S. But if you're in the U.S., all you have to do to be entered in this giveaway, which will end in 
we'll say two weeks from the day this video goes live. So I'll have it on the screen right here the day that it ends, and it'll be in the description. And we'll do a live stream the day that it ends. I'll pick a random comment, but all you have to do to enter is go down in the comments down below, tell me your local skate park, where you're from, and what your favorite trick that I do utilizing these bars is. Any trick that I do that utilizes, utilizes the bend of these handlebars in your local skate park in the comments down below, and I will pick a winner randomly in two weeks from this going live. Get in there, do it. If you want these bars, leave a comment. Thank you to Carl and Nowhere for their continuous support. I'm stoked to have these bars on all three of the bikes that I'll be riding moving forward. Thank you for the support and watching this video as well as everyone who supports me and everything that I do. And hopefully you enjoyed this one enough that if you're new here or you haven't yet, you'll hit the subscribe button while you're down below leaving a comment of your local skate park and your favorite trick that I do that utilizes these bars to win a pair of them in the comments. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Be there in two weeks and we'll see you then. Goodbye.